Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this multi-part series, we're going to be taking a look at the new simulation nodes in Blender 3.6. We're going to look at several use cases for them, from creating variations on an object, to making simple explosions, and finishing up with particles that can chase after things or run away from them. So let's jump right into it. With the release of Blender 3.6, the simulation nodes section of geometry nodes has come out of beta and is now in the stable version. I'm going to go over to my geometry nodes tab and create a new tree for this object. To use simulation nodes, you have to add a simulation zone node tree. That's under simulation, simulation zone. Connect your geometry input and then your geometry output. The idea behind simulation nodes is that you have some static geometry input to start with that is fed into the simulation input. Then, for each frame, this simulation loop is run and the results are fed forward through the rest of your node tree to the result for that frame. But then on the next frame, instead of using the original geometry, the geometry as it ended at the simulation output is used as the new geometry for the next frame. This means we can add or subtract from the existing geometry, or we can base information for the next frame on the previous frame. Let's do a quick for instance. Say on every frame, I wanted to create a new cube and place it randomly in my scene somewhere. I can do that by going to Mesh Primitives Cube and then adding a Join Geometry. This is going to add a one meter cube on each frame of my animation. However, they'll all be the same. I need to add some randomness. So if from the size here, I add in a random value node, you'll notice that I get a red dashed line. That's because the random value is trying to output multiple random values for every point in the geometry. But a cube has this circle input, which means it only takes a single value. To accomplish this, I simply need to set the ID of my random value to some static amount for each frame, and then the node will understand that it's only going to be outputting a single value. I'm going to use the scene time node to get the frame number that I'm currently on. I'll plug that into ID. As soon as I do this, you'll see that my minimum, maximum, ID, and seed have all turned into single value inputs. I'm going to have my minimum sized cube be 0.5 on each side and my maximum be two on each side. I'll go into wireframe mode and run the simulation by pressing the space bar to start my animation playback. Of course, all of these cubes have been placed at the origin because I didn't do anything with their transform. To do that, I could simply use a transform geometry node and do a similar thing that I've done with the random value here on the translation. And I'll give it a different seed just for good measure. One of the features that will be coming in the 4.0 series of Blender is the idea of a serial loop. This will be very similar to a simulation zone like this, except that instead of using each frame to generate the new information, you'll be able to determine an amount of iterations that you want the simulation loop to go through on each frame. So if you wanted to generate 100 boxes here for every frame, you could simply do that and set the iterations to 100. But for now, we could use the simulation node to create these boxes. And if we were happy with them, we could simply go over here, apply our geometry at the frame we want, and now we have the actual boxes created. Processes like this are great for growing procedural items. So you could generate something like a tree growing or a building building up or something like that using this process. One of the things you may notice if you've been using geometry nodes for a while is that I'm using this cube primitive that doesn't have field inputs and I'm creating multiple random copies of this all over my scene. 
without using a bunch of manual loops of just cutting and pasting the same node over and over again, this really hasn't been a thing you could do before in geometry nodes very easily. So if you had a node group that generated something, let's take a look at one that I have. I'm going to use this Lego beam generator. And I'm going to disconnect my original input so that I don't get my default cube here. It's pretty simple in that it can generate beams of any given length and at any size. But again, it only has single value inputs. I could remove my cube here and instead use my beam generator. And I'll generate an integer for the number of holes. And I'll say a minimum of two holes and a maximum of 10. And for placement, I don't want my Z value to change at all, just my X and Y value. I'm just going to move forward with my right arrow key. Now, of course, this doesn't take collisions into consideration. It's still generating a whole bunch of different beams of different lengths, and I could make them of different sizes as well. If you were going to do this before, your beams would have had the same number of holes for each one of them, and you'd really just be able to change their translation, rotation, and scale. But now in addition to being able to change their transform, I'm also able to change the parameters for each one generated. Again, in Blender 4.0, when we have serial loops, we'd be able to generate these even before we got into a simulation zone. So this would only have to be calculated once. So there it is. I hope you're finding this series helpful, and I hope you learn a thing or two about simulation nodes. I want to give a quick shout out to all my Patreon supporters who are making content like this possible. If you want to join my Patreon, the link for that's down in the description. Again, I hope this inspires you to make something awesome. And until next time, I'll catch you later.